you really do. You're a 21 year old punk fucking kid. This grandpa's given you everything all your fucking life. You've never had a car payment, a house payment. Everything you live in was given to you by grandpa. You fucking don't know what it's like to work for a fucking living like I do. To bust my fucking ass and do what I do. And you know what, Sean? You fucked me, and that's the way you got it. But you know what? Your grandpa's money will run out someday, and you'll have to feast for yourself. Get a fucking jog, you piece of shit. Welcome to Behind the Smoke Podcast, Barbecue War Stories. My name is Sean Walchuff, and I am here with my man, Derek Marceau, from Valley Farm Market. Uh, we are recording live uh, on a Friday. Yeah, it's a new day to uh, do a podcast. It actually works pretty good, and um, beautiful San Diego, the weather's good, and I feel like I always say that, but it's uh, true. We got some good weather, some good we- uh, weather for last weekend for Memorial Day. Yeah, Memorial Day is, uh, Memorial May actually marks barbecue month, and it's, you know, typically Memorial weekend is something where people are really using their grills a lot and cooking a lot of food, so we I had, know that's uh, a high, high volume day for the butcher shop. No, we were very, very fortunate. We have... Um, just got a, a lot of support from the community lately, and we Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday were the four busiest days um, in the history of the store combined. That's so, amazing. Um, it was uh, exciting, but with uh, growth, there comes uh, challenges. <laughs> <a few> challenges. <laughs> so it was exciting to say the least. We um, pretty much slept here because we were so busy, and we sold uh, about two hundred gallons of guacamole 200 yeah. gallons of guacamole yeah. how many have, avocados is that I, it's I like an orchard i only have <laughs> five or ten fingers and ten, oh ten toes so i can't count that high but no it was um it was a lot san diego we uh we're we're big on gua- guacamole yeah and you know how we do it we don't do anything oh fast, no so oh no we have to actually get the true avocados we don't get pulp brought in we Shuck what is that? And, I don't know what that is. Right. You'd get in trouble if you yeah. did that. So we shuck all the avocados ourselves and make it fresh so people can enjoy it. And um, that they did, man. It was a bitching weekend. And, uh, but now we're, we're so excited to have our next guest in, Stacy Poon Kinney. And um, I've known her for quite some time, and she's just been an absolute sweetheart. And um, she's really shown a lot of support to uh, the store at Valley Farm, and um, we're, we're happy to have you. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Welcome, Fun. welcome. Stacy is a Food Network star. Me? Food no. Network star. Yes, you are. <laughs> and uh, the cool thing about the internet is I could find all that old footage. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some really fun things on the internet of me. I found there out. Is... My son found them, actually. I was like, really, buddy? Thanks. There is. <laughs> well, uh, one of the cool things about the podcast, it is uh, behind the smoke and barbecue war stories. I mean, that's Derek and I. We live in barbecue, but part of the podcast is business, marketing, entrepreneurship, um, just really finding out what makes business owners tick and what makes us fail and then decide to continue to try to be in business. Uh, I, mean, I can tell th- you some barbecue fails I've had. <laughs> some epic ones we, definitely, we definitely <laughs> want to get into that for sure. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we want to hear a little bit more about was your experience on Restaurant Impossible. Um, how Absolutely. how the uh, how the story came to be? Because okay. that that is uh, kind of why we started this podcast. Is I mean that voicemail from my uh, holy <laughs> cow! I was cringing. I was like, oh, that's really mean. Yeah, <laughs> it's, very, it's <laughs> really mean, mean spirited man. But you know what? Sometimes it's those awful things that are exactly what you need to propel you forward. Yeah, and they, I've they definitely experienced my fair share of that. So tell us know? a little bit about um, opening up the Trails Eatery and um, why you wanted to get into the restaurant business. Well, I actually started in your restaurant, um, uh-huh, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> history. There's some history. history. So I think I was 11, and I was it was a different restaurant then, and I was shelling shrimp in the back for pocket change because we didn't have any money. So if I wanted any pocket change to go to the 7-Eleven across the street, then I I had to work for it. I mean, my parents just didn't have it to I give to that. me. I yeah, it. it wasn't yeah. a bad existence, you know. I learned yeah. how to work early, and, and I enjoyed it. You did enjoy it. I did. See I that? loved it. My hands were numb, you know, because I was <laughs> And shrimp and the shrimp were in ice water. Yeah, give the kid that job. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nobody know. else wants it. And I made box lunches and um, I kind of I fell in love with the kitchen. I remember telling my mom, who had been in food service her whole life at that point, Mom, I want to open a restaurant. And she was like, Honey, don't do it. People in perishables. Bad 
idea. And I was like, no, 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 I want to do this. She was like, oh, just do something else, please. Um, and, you know, I went on, I, I had a, a fun career in dance, actually, for a while, which you can find on the internet. Um, <laughs> the not that kind of dance. We will. I know all of you are thinking We, we, we will find that. <laughs> I was a B-girl, um, a break dancer. And um, I got to do that. It was really cool. Um, got to do some, like, music videos and that kind of thing. And, um, and then I hurt my knee and I fell back into restaurants. And I was... Uh, uh, I was, gosh, I was managing the front of the house at a big restaurant chain. And as part of my training... What was the name of that restaurant? I was chain? Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom. Yay. We got a lot of love for Rock Bottom because of the relationships that kind of tie, I oh guess, all gosh, of us Oh my gosh, all of us right? together. Yeah. You know, Brad. I hired this kid who had moved back to San Diego from Chicago, wearing oh. a real smart button up. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think I hired him as a host. And I was a really young manager. I was, I had like a red mohawk. I was kind of, they called me Crazy Stacy. Crazy I was. Stacy, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not <laughs> was, much has changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got it right. Um, so I was kind of blazing my way through management there. And um, I, I just remember hiring him and thinking like, he's a good kid. Like he's a good kid. And lo and behold, you know, Brad grew in his life and ended up at, um, you know, uh, Cisco first. He was at Cisco first, yeah. And then I know that Sean and I were his first two accounts. First two accounts yeah. at uh, U.S. Foods. And then, uh, yeah, once he left Cisco and went to U.S. Foods, he and I were his first accounts at U.S. Foods. And, yep. and that's just been a relationship that's been nothing but awesome. Um, and then, you know, I already knew Derek okay. from growing up coming to Valley Farms and spending Lots of time here, you know, picking up pollo asada for the family. <laughs> that, that's there the, you go. That, that's that's, that's the hook. Yeah, that was, that's the uh, hook. Yeah. We had Andy, Andy Harris from Grand Ole Barbecue in here. And oh, that, yeah. that uh, he comes in for the, Do you still have any pollo asada or do you sell out of all that? So 2,000 <laughs> pounds in two days. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. That's yeah. Problems incredible. of scale. Yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, like I said, we're so fortunate that we're doing that kind of business. But man, it, it's... Um, it's a lot. I mean, you, know, you want to make sure it's consistent. Yeah. You want to make sure everything's right. And it's, you can't rush anything and people don't understand sometimes. And yeah. um, we ran out on Monday, um, like five hours before we uh, closed the store. So we had to use chicken breast instead of leg meat. Mm. Some people were really, really excited. They're like, oh, we, we wanted chicken breast anyways. And then some people were um, pretty disappointed. They yeah. didn't, didn't even, didn't Vocally even disappointed. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but it, was, it was good. It was a good experience. You know, running out, uh, it's one of the things that, you know, people in our business, they don't like to do. Yes. But it happens. Yeah. Yeah. And it happens because we actually make it from scratch and we do it the right way. And good food takes time. And I think that the public's starting to get educated on that again. And they're starting to really, um, you know, come full circle when it comes to that. And they understand that things aren't just manufactured and that they come to places like ours because we're doing it right. Because we're, you know, you're, you're smoking things in a 14 or 15 hour smoke, right? You're yeah. going low and slow and you're marinating things for hours on end so that they taste delicious. And we're making, you know, biscuits from scratch. I can't just make them up here, you know? No. Um, and I think you can't use ones that were made to... yesterday. No. Cause they don't, they just don't, the quality's it's not, not there. the same. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. All I know, though, Derek, from this opening is that somebody on your staff hates guacamole at this point. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Like, that poor sap. <laughs> we do that. Is it Austin? And, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, we do that. And we do, um, hey, we hate turkeys for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We hate prime ribs at Christmas. Yeah. And it's like you literally <laughs> dream about it. You, you go to sleep and you, you live, You it. live on it, but you hate it. It's yeah. part, of the, part of the horror. Um, I think one of the funny, it's crazy that you actually enjoyed your job when you were young because a lot of people that opened up, I mean, I was in the restaurant business. My grandfather made me go and bust tables and mm -hmm. wash dishes when I was 12 and I hated it. Oh. I mean, I absolutely despised it. I mean, cause I was hoping that I could go and hang out with my friends and play basketball and go to the beach and do everything that everyone else was doing. But yeah. instead I was out working and thank God he made me do that. Yeah. Because now I actually know what work is. Now you're the best value. buster in the in the <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll out bus anybody. <laughs> that's that's for uh, sure. That's for sure. Yeah, I loved it. You know, I think I just wanted to be in the restaurant. I think that was the thing. I just liked being there. I liked having being access. Being a part of something. Being a part of something, but also like seeing how it all works. Yeah. I'm I'm really big about understanding like all the different things. Like, you know, an electrician comes to the restaurant to fix something. Like, how does that work? Show yeah. me what that means. Like, I want to know more. And so I think that's that curiosity. You know, how do you peel shrimp? Oh, that's, that's the vein. 
What does that mean? Oh, it's poop. Great. Um, you know, so I, I liked learning that stuff and, um, I, and that, that kept me there. It's just curiosity, right? Yeah. I think that, that keeps all of us going. I think and, that's kind of what brings us together too, because I think we're all probably why people. I always ask, yeah. I'm like, well, why? Why? Like, yeah. I don't want to, like, I understand I need to do that, but why? Like, yeah. teach me the whole thing. I want to know everything. And it sometimes can be pretty annoying. Yeah, it drives me crazy. Like, for sure. <laughs> and it's like, there, just do it. I'm like, well, I want to know, like, why? Yeah. Explain it to me so I can, you know, I don't have to ask you again. Well, not only explain it, but is there also, once you figure that out, is there a better way to do that. it? Is there a way to adapt it to a, something that hasn't been done that's going to work sure. for my business? Yeah. I love problem solving. Yeah. Like I, I, it makes me like excited and happy. People are like, "Oh, this is a problem." I'm like, "That's not a problem. That's a challenge." <laughs> if you, if you want you. problems, come in. Go ahead and open up a business, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so tell it. Tell us about getting the trails open. I mean, that oh, was yeah. your dream to get that that it restaurant was. open. And uh, how'd you pick the location? How'd you find the business? Well, I actually um, I was contacted by the and forgive me for not using names because I'm doing it on purpose. Um, but the person who used to own the business where your business is at also owned another small business. And um, uh, we had been regulars. Uh, my son was a baby at the time. And um, that person heard that I was maybe interested in getting out of the bar business because I was working until four in the morning and my kid woke up at six. He this still is does. Rock bottom, the corporate. When I was working yeah. at rock bottom assistant and manager 70 80 hours a week you know i had it you, good you as a manager i you, did you, you thought it was a, you thought it was a lot of work when you're doing 50 hours a week yeah. like man i'm working my ass off yeah and, and then you become I'm an like, owner and you're like what did i do yeah that was easy what's this 80 90 hour a week, yeah. week i didn't know that existed yeah so i had my kid and i was like you know I, it doesn't make sense i was commuting you know 27 miles and I just wanted something different. I wanted something more. I wanted to know more of the whys of the restaurant business. You know, I didn't have access to that in this corporate setup where, you know, everything is sort of divided up. Like this person does that and that person does this. I'm like, well, I know enough about HR. I know enough about graphics. I know enough. I'm like, I can do this. Um, so I was approached by somebody else. Hey, do you want to buy my restaurant? I was like, well, I don't know. Let me look at <laughs> yeah. that. Um, so we took a while, looked at it, ended up buying a very small restaurant. Um, and then two years into that, I was... I thought I was going to lose my mind, honestly. It was 34 seats. I came from a 550-seat restaurant that's a half a city block long and 13,000 square feet. It's bigger than the the store, right? Right. Yeah, it's 550 seats. Almost double. Three patios. Three bar wells, two stories. Like I, I had I mean, so how many, many people employees. Would you have on a shift? Ninety. Jesus, I have <laughs> <Yeah>. that total. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot, you know. And so then I was sitting shift. there. Oh yeah, it was God. impossible to man. I mean, yeah. it wasn't impossible. It was actually kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th- there I was sitting in my thirty-four seat diner with seven employees. And I was like, I'm bored. I'm going to die. Like, I need something else. And we knew that the economy was a little shaky. My dad and I, my dad's my what year not was so business, my, my not so uh, silent business partner. That was in, yeah, that was, oh, well, let me see. What's this year? 10 years this year is seven. So that was 08 ish. And it was like somewhere into 08. And we're like, well, let's expand. Um, let's not That's be like crazy. Recession time. That's when we opened our restaurant. Because it's starting to be a recession <laughs> and we can feel like the economy is not awesome. So instead of opening another location, let's be safe. This one works. Let's just expand here because it felt safer. Well, um, it was a month into our remodel, which was uh, 09, right? Mm-hmm. So the economy tanked in like March of 09. Like yes. it was just massive right it was real bad they didn't come out i don't know how i don't know how we kept the restaurant open you guys are like this the chargers were in the playoffs uh i was watching yeah (laughs) fair weather city everyone's coming out yeah (laughs) well i was like watching and then i'm like you know i don't really do football but i was watching with the family and i didn't want beer and i didn't want olives and i was like something's wrong with me something (laughs) is wrong with me i made my husband pull over on the way home i was like go to the drugstore he's like what are you talking about i was like go to the drugstore and I got a pregnancy test. I was like, You're pregnant. Yeah. I was totally <laughs> pregnant. I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> so I was pregnant with my beautiful oh daughter, my Matisse. Gosh. But here we are expanding the restaurant in the middle of construction. Right. And I had signed up because I like doing handy things. So like I registered for power tools for nice. our wedding. Like I'm <laughs> crazy. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this by myself. I'm going to do that. Well, then no, none of yeah. that happened. So we had to pay a ton more money and change orders because there's all these things I couldn't do. Long story short, we remodeled, we reopened as the trails um, in 09. And what I, was it originally? It was Megan's Cafe. Oh, it was Megan's yeah. Cafe. So then you rebranded. 
I did. So you I needed lo- So not only you're remodeling, you're also re- new logos, rebranding new everything. Completely. Yeah. And the reason why is that in the time that I'd spent in that space, I recognized it as a true neighborhood restaurant. Sure. I mean, people would come in and talk across tables and invite people to come and sit down and like hang out. And I was just blown away by what it was. And I wanted the name to reflect what it was. You know, it wasn't this person's place. Yes. It was this place's place. Yes. Right. And so the trails is the Mission Trails Regional Park is Absolutely. right there. And so that was my inspiration was just the, the amazing group of human beings that that came in that I call my family yeah. now. I mean I don't just call them customers or guests. Like that's my trails family. Well that's those, really those cool. are the people that kept you kept that pay the bills. Oh, yeah. yeah, not with, only without, that, but it's without, deeper. With, with, without them, I mean, we have generations of yeah. people that have come to the restaurant yeah. where it's like they were they were babies, you know, when I was bussing tables. And, like, now they're coming and they're bringing their kids. And those are the things that, like, they tell me, oh, you know, I used to always sit on the back patio with my dad. Yeah. You know, and this was a spot. And no matter what, we always came back here on Sundays. And, you know, those are the things that people invest in. And, they're you know, the, it becomes more than a restaurant. Exactly. Yeah. You, allow, you, you allow yourself to be part of that community. Mm-hmm. You embrace that community. That's what's really cool. You know, when you're saying that it wasn't someone's place, it's, it's kind of like our place, right? Mm-hmm. It's the trails. It's everyone to come here. And we talk about, you know, some of the, the horror stories that we have as business owners, but those little things where you get that community involved and you, I mean, we talked about the pancake thing earlier. Like that's really, really exciting. And those yeah. are the things that you live for. It's like they walk out of here and they're, they're vested in this business and it's, it, it makes you feel good when you leave. And those are the things that I, I personally live for when I can see how excited people are when they come into my store. It's a, it's such a cool feeling. There's this little boy named Caden, and he was three weeks old when I bought the restaurant. And he came every Sunday with his dad and his grandpa. And um, there's been some family dynamic shifts, but I'm lucky because Caden goes to school where my son and my daughter go to school. Nice. So he's literally like my favorite physical time teller right. I'm like you were just born right. and you're in whatever grade now like what the heck and I see him I'm like what's up Caden he's so shy he's like a hi you know <laughs> but it's, it's like he's a grown-up like little boy it, it's amazing oh my god we gosh, have the same thing JC's da- JC's daughter was she was born on the day that we opened the restaurant yeah wow it's, it's a it's a time capsule and it's every time so I rad. see her it's like it, I'm like oh my gosh has a restaurant been open for this long <laughs> like this shoot stop crazy. crying yeah. yeah we'll have people that will come in too they're like man I remember you Derek when you were like in diapers running around the, <laughs> down oh the aisles gosh. you know they're like your dad would bring you in he was always so proud to show off his little boy and I'd be running around probably pulling shit off the shelf <laughs> messing <laughs> up the entire store everywhere. and they're like yeah man we, we will 100% remember you running around when you were just a, a little little boy and I'm like wow that's really awesome it brings you know that like you said that sense of community back to the, the store and yeah. it's um we have pictures of people in the 19 i think my oldest one is 1959 that a uh, lady came and she it was her and her mom and they tied their horse up no the way no way from the store you know we, what? We i believe that though we had a yeah. horse bar where you can tie your horses up because from here east was dirt yeah. Dirt road. Yeah. So yeah, they would come ride their horses here to get their groceries. My gosh. And, uh, That's so, so cool. Things like that. It's it's really exciting. Yeah. Even down by Cali Comfort, it was all horse ranches all horses. before. We still I have mean, horses that will though. From like, the ranch ride, down the yeah, way, yeah. The, <laughs> but you never so, know what you'll see on Troy Street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the horses are the cool things. <laughs> <laughs> I've been shopping here at Valley Farm since I was ten. That's so awesome. Yeah. It's That's rad. So awesome. Yeah. A lot of history. It's wild. So getting that. So getting to the to the thing. So we expanded. It was the height of global recession. You're, had a tough preg- pregnancy, uh, and it was you a had, tough pregnancy. You had, you had complications. I had, a, right? I had a lot of complications with my daughter. I found out I have a heart issue. Have all kinds of stuff, and um, it was it was rough. It was a rough go. We didn't get to open the way we wanted to. You know, everything just kind of became very different than what we had expected but yeah. that's life right it is um we ran out of money for marketing and signage and decor because we used that on all the change orders that we had oh. to do because i was pregnant yeah and then also it's construction so you just you run into problems you like you, you open a wall and you're like oh god what did i do um yeah. so we we just had all kinds of stuff happen and then and then we just had to keep going from there well it was the recession and people were eating out less and the people in the neighborhood where we're at they all kept their houses because they mined their checkbooks they're very thoughtful about what they're spending and how and where and so we we just didn't have enough business and um 
we kept going after business in different ways. We opened for dinner. We did this. We did that. Um, we opened for barbecue dinner. Yeah. I was talking about right. my like nice. epic barbecue fails. <laughs> <laughs> we had plenty before we met Jean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, my dad is this huge barbecue guy. He loves barbecue. He's traveled all over the country to eat barbecue. And he's really darn good at it. But he came down and he showed me who at the That's time... That's your not-so-silent partner? It's my not-so-silent partner. He's <laughs> yeah. like, this is what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, for the barbecue dinner. I was like, okay, yes, sir. Um, so I'm like, uh, before that, I, it was the pregnancy thing, right? The smell of barbecue can be a little overwhelming. My wife, yeah, it's so, so, I was so difficult it. for her. Oh, I, w- I was like, I don't even want to do this. Like, I can't stand the She's smell. a meat girl and like, she loves barbecue. She loves steak. Like, she loves you know, Bulgarian meats. And- yeah. She just can't right now. It's just not like oh, she yeah. wants cherries. <laughs> <laughs> Give me her, some cherries. Give her what she wants. <laughs> Don't yeah. take the cherries exactly. from her. Exactly. Um, so anyhow, we did this barbecue thing. That didn't work. But nothing worked. So we shut the dinner down, and we were you just were open dying. Seven days? Us, we were open seven days. Yeah. Until what time? Uh, well, we were we were seven to three, and seven then we three. did a five to nine for dinner, and then when we killed dinner off, then we were just seven to three, and. Then we were just, I mean, we were just floundering. We it's, were dying a slow death. Adding dinner is such a difficult thing because that's what we did. That's why we opened the restaurant. We opened it with the, because we had the liquor license. Oh. We're like, we're going to add the sports bar and we're going to add dinner because there's no dinner around in the area. No, there's not. But having no. dinner where it's Friday night and I have one host, one server, and like my bartender, Eric, is also managing. Like, oh I mean, it was so slow. How did you push through that? <laughs> That's a great question. I, I right, had, like that's a long, go, that's I mean, a whole that's, story. That's a whole story. <laughs> but I mean, exactly what you said. It's you have to figure out ways to get people to come in. Otherwise, yeah. you can't be open for those hours. So that's what we did. We figured out a way. It wasn't my figuring, actually. It was a sweet lady named Lois who used to be a regular, and she brought in a little ad from the UT, and the ad was for the show that had never even aired yet. And it was like, Robert Irvine has a new show called Restaurant Impossible. And we're looking for failing restaurants. And she was so sweet because nobody really knew that I was failing. Literally, my, it was my dad and my husband and I. And that was it. Yeah, nobody because- knew how bad it was. I, was. I hadn't paid myself in months. I had a brand new baby, right? She was born in September and it was December. And the electricity got shut off at my house because wow. I hadn't paid myself in so long right. because I kept paying my crew. So I was like, I can't lose them. Yeah, like, right. can't I like, can't make this bad for them too? So um, I ended up, you know, in desperation, seeing that. And she, Lois, had circled failing and wrote, "Not true." And I was like, "Ooh, girl, you don't know yeah. how true that is." <laughs> <laughs> so That's yeah. it. maybe this was meant to be. Yeah, you know, maybe, but it, I think it, so. It so takes I called risk, them. right? It takes risk to make that call. It does, and I'm I'm pretty private when it comes to like finances and like also you don't want to fail publicly publicly yeah well you stinks. become vulnerable yeah you, you have to put yourself out there and that's scary that's it scary. is terrifying and so i talked to my dad about it and culturally it, chinese folks don't talk about their money mm-hmm. out loud it doesn't happen like no no and he was like yeah let's do it and i was like whoa <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa okay. it's, that, it's that bad huh yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> So I was like, why not? So I sent in my my little application and then we had somebody come out and like check out the restaurant. And then um, they said, yeah, hey, we want you to be in our next season. You know, how long can you make it? And I was like, let me ask dad how much money he has. Like, really? (laughs) I mean, um, and so we ended up we ended up on it. But I'll tell you that their first Restaurant Impossible aired in February. And I thought I was going to die. I almost threw up. Really? Because. It was this man who had this restaurant and he was a hoarder oh, and no. he had like dead rats in oh, his refrigerators oh, no. and like all kinds of horrible things. And I was like, what did they think what of they, me? Wow, this is <laughs> right. like, what is this? I don't understand. This isn't who we are. So I was freaking out. And you know, our episode has been hailed as like one of the very few that's very, very different. Like we weren't a whole bunch of family drama. We yeah. weren't, we weren't dirty. Our food wasn't bad. Um, and Robert's been great about saying that publicly. Um, it just, we needed some other stuff. We needed to add dinner. We needed to like, you know, get our heads out of our behinds and try this other thing again. Um, and also, frankly, we needed marketing. 
Yeah. And Food Network has aired our episode, I think, about 50 times in the U.S. Wow. And, that, and that's on Food Network. Forget about all the YouTube hits that you get all around the world. Yeah, it's because Food Network has been kind enough to put up a short clip that they're allowing people to watch mm -hmm. because they, they really protect yeah. um, all, of, all of their information very well. They've got really effective web crawlers out there, mm -hmm. so you can't just attach it to something. But um, they had to put that out when I was on Food Network Star because oh, really? uh, people were so curious about my history. They're like, sure. hey, you know, where did she come from? I think I've seen her before. And, um, you know, there was a lot of uh, chatter about it. So they put that up so that people could kind of, you know, re reacquaint themselves with our story. Um, so lo and behold, Food Net or Restaurant Possible comes. We had this, you know, kind of magical two day makeover. They really do it in two days. Do they I really? Can't, I can't they believe really that. Really in two days. I mean, but you they change have your menu. Do you guys like, you guys talk to US Food and say, okay, here's what we're <clears> going to do. We're going to bring in this new food. Like, so, okay, so people are like, is it all real? And I'll say that the restaurant Impossible was 95% real. That's crazy. What was weird was that when. <laughs> I'm a smart girl, right? right? Like, this is what I do for a living. So when they gave me the list of buys that I had to ask U.S. food for, they were like, this is what we need, you know, to be on site on such and such day so that when we shoot, we have what we need. I was like, um, excuse me, Miss Producer Lady, this is dinner food. Yeah. I told you I wasn't doing dinner. She's like, we're going to pretend we didn't have this conversation because I need to get this one on camera. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> I said no dinner. Right. And she was like, Stacey, you got to save it. And I was like, I'm not saving shit. Like, I'm not doing dinner. <laughs> and not so, happen. yeah. And, and so we had it out about the dinner thing. And she was like, if you want us to come, you're going to suck it up and you're going to do this thing. So um, when Lisa and I were outside talking about how we didn't want to do dinner, it wasn't a good fit for our families. Like, we'd already lived that already. So that's why it looked a little hokey because, yeah. like, I'm no actress. Like, I cannot act. <laughs> well, I don't think it looked hokey. I think the best part is it, it seemed so genuine. Because well, I mean, I've the, seen, the a, lot of, I've seen a lot genuine. of reality shows where, you know, it's Gordon Ramsay or it's Bar Rescue, mm -hmm. and it just feels like bullshit. Okay, You're yeah. like, come on. But, like, from you, like, you let yourself be vulnerable, and I think that's probably why the episode was so... You know relatable to other people yeah when i was crying like when those things were happening that was all real like those were real emotions that was real talk like i i, I couldn't feed my family yeah. like i had a i had an infant that i wasn't taking care of well because i was failing in my business and then on top of that i wasn't taking care of these people who i had committed to when i hired them to help take care of them and their families and then i also wasn't taking care of my father like it was the weight of the world yeah. like, that and, was and a it's real hard thing. to understand sometimes with people you know you can have all the puzzle pieces mm -hmm. but sometimes you just need help putting them together yep so you had all the intangibles you had you knew how to cook you're a phenomenal cook you very very smart you know how to do it but you just had to have that help of how to put it all together yeah. and this might have been the ticket that oh, and, and the marketing end i mean that that is just In the, po the power of people all over the world coming to your restaurant is an amazing yeah it was it was crazy. I mean, I ended up having people come in saying like, "I saw your episode when I was in the Barbados, and now we're here." And right. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, hi!" Like, I actually wanted to have a map of where people had come from, you know, and put little pictures cool. of them up. That, that it would, would have cool. it would have been a really cool thing to have just as a keepsake. But um, we ended up getting great local press um, and just really amazing San Diego support. Like San Diegans support yes. locals. San Diego support small business. San Diegans are rad human beings. Yeah. And we just got so much love in the process. I, I can tell you that I have, I still am amazed by the outpouring of support and love and kindness and, and letters that I received from people from all over the country and like little care packages that people would bring with them when they were traveling to San Diego and they decided they wanted to stop by. Um, I have a box of things that's so cool. just of, of little awesome. little little notes of kindness because the, some days are hard right in what we do <laughs> yeah, some days are really hard and you're like what <laughs> you, did i do <laughs> you wake up you wake up with a plan and then once you start working on that plan everything changes yeah once you make you're, a plan then, you're, you're destined for every, it to go yeah, sideways then everything else happens and you realize you know what what i came in to do today you know hopefully i was able to do a start it you know yeah. at least start what i wanted to do because you have to deal with business you have to deal with people you have to deal with vendors yeah. sean sean Sean. <laughs> yeah. Oh my Sean. gosh. Yes. Sean. Yes. I mean, yes. that's, that's what happens. You know, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, stop saying my name. <laughs> I really need to focus on what I'm doing right now. You guys, just give me 30 minutes of like, no, Derek, no, Derek. Right, Derek. exactly. Like, I'm on me. the phone. Do you right. see this? This is oh, an iPhone. It's that? on my ear. It's on my ear. I'm talking to somebody. Why are you talking, like, Why are you to, talking me? to me? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, know I'm good. I know I'm good at multitasking, but seriously. <laughs> just give me a few 
fucking minutes. <laughs> I hashtagged Please. it once. I just wanted to see. I like put a 15 minute window and I hashtagged it and I had 19 interruptions in 15 minutes. No way. And I was just trying to like bust out some work that the that my crew had asked me for. Hey, we really need this change. Awesome. I'm on it. Let, yeah. let me take your I'm session. I'm on it. Real quick. Real yeah. Quick, real yeah. Quick, real yeah. Quick, oh, hey, quick. I just have a question. Ask, yeah, real quick. I'm like, like, can you ask your friend? This isn't real quick. I know the person next to you knows the damn answer. Right. Yeah. Just ask them. Like, <laughs> That's crazy. So how, oh. how did you get from a uh, restaurant impossible to food network star really by accident it was a really strange thing so i was uh you know, did the restaurant impossible thing they asked me to come back for the 50th 50th episode um and we did a little like where are they now what's going on uh and that do was know, do you know how many story? restaurants are still currently open that were on that show not a lot i haven't looked at the list for I've a while looked, i've looked at the okay list. wait tell me i'm excited it's, i want to know <laughs> open course, and or not sold that's right yeah well, there's different lists. Because there's the, somebody who's made their life to like check up on the restaurant impossible. I restaurants. can't. I can't believe <laughs> what you look when you look at when you look up Food Network. Mm -hmm. So there's Food Network, everything that they put out. But then there's also like the Food Network gossip, which is like the E Hollywood and like all this behind the scenes stuff. Yes, I know about them a lot. <laughs> right. Food Network star. There's a I'm lot sure, of Food Network sure. gossip. Well, you were a hit. I mean, you were a hit, and when you got eliminated, people were very upset. Aww. I mean, it. it Thanks. You resonated with people. I mean, your personality, the way that you approached all the episodes, you could tell that you were different. Oh, thank and you. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's because you owned a restaurant or it was just something that when you're genuine, I think that's why people connect. It's so funny, though, because they're like, you're so fake. And I'm like, no, really? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just I'm kind of like, like this. Like, <laughs> swear. This I'm not making it up. <laughs> you know, I don't like to talk smack about other people. In the, and I don't think that went over well with the show because that's not what the show is about, right? It doesn't make for great TV. I get it. Right. I, I have a TV background. Mm -hmm. um, I get the things about me that they were for the production sake they needed more of that I just wouldn't give them because I was focused on being genuine. Um, That's you know, huge. I mean, and I is. think at the end of the day, people will really take to that more than they're going to take to the fake shit. Cause yeah. for me, when I watch something, I, I can see right through that stuff. And I will say the person that won Damaris though, she is the most genuine and she was nothing but genuine on that show. And Nikki as well. It's so mm -hmm. funny because I actually really love those two girls and I, I hate that they use this kind of classic story of like yeah. strong women being pitted against each other. I was like, this is such baloney. <laughs> like, come on. come on. Yeah, that show I would say is like 75% reality yeah. and 25% produced. Like literally there are parts where each one of us on the show understood clearly that they took sound bites from another time or another space yeah. and layered it over like other footage so that it didn't show us saying it so that they could get the story they wanted. Right. When you have 10 story producers on a show, you're going to have produced story. Yeah. And we all knew that was going to happen, but I think it was surprising to us the extent to which it happened. So uh, that was kind of harder to swallow. But so 67%. That's, 67%, just, from, that's close just from rate. season two. There's other seasons where wow. it was a 90% close rate. Holy cow. And you know that's a testament to you. Um, not just being on the show, but if you think about just restaurants, just being in business. Yeah. You know, if you're still in business and you're in September going to be celebrating a 10 year anniversary, yeah. it is, you know, it, it's remarkable. So, you know, it's, it's remarkable. Thank you. And, you know, I tell people I, I would um, I was asked by the producers of Restaurant Impossible to sort of uh, be somebody who would reach out to other people that were um, on Restaurant Impossible, but their show hadn't aired yet because it's a very uncomfortable time and you're you're dying literally trying yeah. to just like make it to when your show airs. And so I reached out to a number of different restaurants over the course of time to just kind of like walk them through that moment and, you know, be a lifeline to them and, and a coach of sorts. And um, one of the things that I would tell them is that it's great that Robert and his team came. It's amazing. It's this miracle in your life. But it doesn't matter yeah. anymore. The minute he leaves, it's up to you. Yeah. And that's when the rubber really hits the road. That's really and what great you advice. decide to do, how you decide to drive, that's what matters. So take the lessons and go a new route. And you have to be fearless in going this new route. Well, put, put on your big girl pants and go. Put on your big girl pants and go. And people yes. would be like, well, he put this stuff on the menu and it's not selling and it's very expensive, but I don't want to change it because he put it on the menu. I was like, are you listening to yourself? Yes. If it doesn't work, get it off. Get it today. off. You own the restaurant. Yeah. Yes. I mean, make um, the change. Do Robert what you have Chef to do. put a heirloom tomato salad on our menu in San Carlos. 
eight years ago, six years ago, whatever, right? With this like wonderful, like a sage vinaigrette. It was delicious. Nobody wanted it. And it was like $30 a case for heirloom tomatoes. And heirloom tomatoes are fucking ugly. Yeah, a right. A lot of times, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 they're phenomenal. I, I, yeah. we, we use them for like pasta sauces and stuff, and it's like they're not. They don't look that appetizing. No. <laughs> and so I was like, um, "That's coming off the menu. I'm not buying another case <laughs> right. of heirloom tomatoes. We're done. We went through the first case, and most of it rotted. And I was like, "It's over." Yeah. So you know, but people um, who aren't willing to make those decisions, they're part of that 67 percent or yes. that 95 percent. Yes. You have to make tough decisions, and you have to make them quickly. And if you can't do that in business in general, you're out. It's done. Well, I mean, one yeah. of the most difficult things opening a restaurant opening a business is you work so hard to get open especially a restaurant in particular it's like you work so hard you run a marathon you yeah. know to get open and then once you're open like guess what now your real work starts yeah oh the marathon's like, yeah, way tougher it's all it's uphill like, now you thought you thought dealing with the contractors and the health department and everything else like the architects everything was difficult beforehand no now you actually have to be in business every single day now the people out in perishables come in right yeah, absolutely yeah. It, absolutely that part's hard and the thing is you have to listen to people and you can't have pride in it no you can be proud of like the work you put in and the effort but you also have to like pay attention to what it is that people want or what it is they don't want and be responsive to that i mean i think you did that right i mean you don't have breakfast yes. anymore no we yeah right? we, clo- we so, closed breakfast which was what kept us open in the first two years yeah the first two years without breakfast i mean we were built on breakfast yeah but literally, we said, you know, operating hours for us to run barbecue the way we need to to make the prep. We got to close Monday through Friday and open up at 11. And it was one of the most difficult things that we did. But it was by far the one that has helped us the most. And I feel like that's the case, right? Those really tough decisions really are the tough. ones that are the best. Like we closed for dinner this January. Yeah. And it's one of the best things I've ever done, honestly. Yeah. I'm like, I, you see, had to. I see my kids. Right. Yeah. Like, well, you hey. have, <laughs> your sanity is important to, to, to the success of your business. Balance. I'm, right. I'm making quote marks. Balance. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I always tell people it's more like a, this like really wonky scale, you know, where like there's balance for 30 seconds and then you've like flip to the other side and then you like flip back and it's never perfect, but it's a fun roller coaster. <laughs> you so have to I, like rides. I think one of the coolest things that you did was you let yourself be vulnerable and that opened up the mm-hmm. doors to food network to have these opportunities i mean you've been modeling for um chef works is that is that right yeah i'm so excited about that so i'm part of chef works 2017 campaign That's right. um i you know with a chef coat inspired by myself and carla hall like that i almost died when i read that i was like oh my gosh me and carla hall so we're in cool. the same sentence this is crazy <laughs> um so uh yeah i mean just really unique opportunities from food network star um and and that all goes back to restaurant impossible i don't think i ever it, finished the story i'll tell you real briefly it was i was on the 50th episode a local producer saw me um who happens to be uh friends of a friend so he was able to get to me and was like i want you to to host this show and i told him he was bad shit crazy like, <laughs> you're fucking nuts yeah you're fucking I like, nuts i was like <laughs> i don't do that like I, I don't know what you're talking about because i went to school for production i was like i had no intention ever of being in front of the camera yeah. ever ever behind the scenes yeah exactly mm-hmm. i was like i'll help you produce but like i'm not doing that and so i ended up um, being convinced over sushi and sake bombs i think it was there you go it was the sake bombs um, <laughs> the, the way to her heart yeah yes. <laughs> my husband's name is sake anyway, <laughs> so, true, true, fact. true so uh i ended up shooting this uh, pilot with him and uh, we didn't get picked up it was for kpbs and but it ended up being fortuitous a friend of mine saw it and he said, uh, hey, Stace, like, you should audition for Food Network Star. And I told him, you're batshit you're crazy. Batshit crazy. Um, I said, you know what? I won't even know where to start. And he knows me well enough to know how to goad me. And he was like, <laughs> well, you're a smart girl. You could probably figure it out. I was like, probably. Psh, I will I figure it out. Yeah. I'm going to get this. So it was literally, there was a cattle call in LA the next week. And I drove up on my husband's birthday um, and we got, we were on in traffic because there was a semi that flipped over. Oh, and no. in that traffic, my then tiny daughter, my two year old daughter ended up putting brown marker all over her face. <laughs> got great pictures of that. I gotta, I gotta dig those we up. Gotta they're pretty those hilarious. So, so yeah. We can get them in the show, in the show notes. For I'll sure. find them. Uh, so she was, you know, just like covered in marker and I got out and I was one of the last five people to walk in the door. They were like literally closing the doors and um, the casting agent recognized me from Restaurant Impossible. Nice. And it just kind of kept going from there. And then I went back for, you know, a call back and um, I really think I was an alternate because I was told, but they never said that. Yeah. Uh, I was called to the show 
two days before I had to be there. So can you imagine? Oh, I was wow. managing my restaurant, oh, right? No, I, I was doing imagine. all the things. It, I had a two-hour meeting with six staff members, and I was like, you are doing this portion of the business. Yes. You are doing this portion of the business. <laughs> you are doing this portion of the business. This is your training. This is your training. This is your training. Like I, got, I gave them each like 15 wow. minutes. Oh, by the way, I can't tell you what I'm doing, although I think they'd all figured it out because yeah. they knew it. I had auditioned. I was like, nobody can know where I'm at. I'm sequestered. Here's an emergency How phone long? call. Expect me to be gone for three months. Oh my god! I was out. Wow. So I had to like. I can't leave for two days. <laughs> it was crazy. That's nuts. I was so anxious about just that alone. Yeah. And then I was like, I was sick. I had a sinus infection. I tried to like, like leave little um, uh, book. Like I read books on video for my for my kids and like you know because mommy was just out like right. overnight so. Did the Whole Food Network star thing. I had a you know great time. You can watch that still. Um, my daughter had a really hard time with me being gone. So yeah. she she kind of actually, she had a psychotic break. And so oh, no. it was good for me to come home. Um, I was, uh, when I gave my final presentation, I, I had found out the, the night before. So I was done. Yeah. I mentally was over it. Sure, like yeah. I wasn't present at all anymore. I just but wanted to go home. would you do it home. again? Oh, <sighs> yes. I think because it was such a unique experience, it was really hard. It was mentally hard. I can't um, imagine what they, I mean, the thing, the challenges they put you through and, you know, the, the criticism, <laughs> you, you've made yourself so vulnerable. So and I think, vulnerable. you know, the, the beauty is, is that you've been able to reap the rewards. I absolutely. mean, the Trails Eatery is just, my wife and I, we go there all the time. We absolutely yeah. love it. You um, like your tab sandwich. Uh, we do. She and likes her French toast. She, she's all about the French toast. <laughs> she's all about the French toast. But um, we're going to have all the links, everything that we talked about in the show notes. Uh, we can't thank you enough. We're going to have to have you back on before your 10 years um, because this just wasn't enough time. We, I know. We, we know. we know you have uh, important... Uh, important things you have to do uh, today. Yeah, you know, one of the cool things, sorry, oh, you know, about owning a business like ours and the people that we get to meet is that you get to make friends with some like really phenomenal humans. And so uh, one of my friends is the uh, is the captain of the Essex and he's actually leaving his post today and going on to do something else super awesome um, in the service. So I, I'm really excited to be there to support him today. So, so well, um, yeah, I, I we, 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 we know that's that's a huge honor and we need yeah. to get make sure you get there on time yeah, it's people, can, people can find you uh on twitter <laughs> they can find me on twitter they can find me on instagram twitter, they can S find SBK me cooks. on facebook yes and, trails eatery. Cooks and the trails eatery the trails so eatery. um find me there i'm pretty active on in all of those places these days um it's just i'm having a good time I'm, you know cooking food and then if there's anything things. we can do for you for the 10 year Oh, we're, we're, we're all in. Whatever you need. We will do whatever you need. Let's have a big party. We'll party time. It. Let's do it. I oh, I'm so excited. 100%. Time. You let me know. If we'll uh, we'll take care of it. So. I've got to bring my Valley Farm steaks back. We yeah. used to do steak and eggs. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll do that for that weekend. I, there we go. Top Sherlin's. That's what we used to cut her yeah. all the time. Portion cut. Yeah. yeah. Six ounce. Yeah. This thick. I remember. <laughs> Only Derek or Don could cut them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, uh, we can't thank you enough for coming in. And like I said, we it's just not enough time. And we're going to have to have you back on. Uh, barbecue War Stories. Be sure to tell your friends. Be sure to come visit Stacy. Uh, check her out. Uh, she is an amazing person that continues to give back to San Diego. And we can't thank you enough for your time. And we're just really excited to uh, to have you behind the smoke back here. Thank you. It's uh, actually really clear air back here behind the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it in the butcher shop. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. That was so cool to spend some time with Stacy. I, 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 wish, I wish we had more time with her, but we're uh, definitely going to want to get her back. We are doing it again. I already talked to her. She's uh, down to do another one because we even talked that there's just we can keep talking for a long time of all the stuff that uh, goes on and what she has going on. And it's really cool for someone who's as busy as she is to make some time for us. And um, but yeah, that's yeah, I have so much respect for somebody like her that makes herself vulnerable and you know is willing to share about being a business owner and dealing with issues and failing with, right not just failing but you know trying to keep your family together you know yeah. and keeping your family together you know if you don't if you don't have a strong family then you know you, it, it makes it so hard all those hours and all those things that you have to go through to keep the restaurant open um, sometimes you lose focus you're working so hard to make that you know 
your family have a better life than maybe you had and then you kind of lose sight of like hey i'm not even there i gotta yeah you know, like she said quote unquote balance yes Find balance. The balance always looking for balance but uh we we are very fortunate that uh we've had some awesome awesome feedback on the podcast and we appreciate it we're we're learning as we go we are trying to be better every single week we're trying to bring you interesting guests uh let us know what you want to hear. Let us know what you want to hear. Barbecue War Stories on Twitter. Uh, Sean P. Walchef on Twitter. Der- Marso Derek on Twitter. Uh, we have people listening in Australia, which is just amazing. Uh, people in Canada, uh, all over the United States, even Charlotte, Houston. Uh, we even have friends in Norway and Italy. Uh, we have some awesome Behind the Smoke stickers that just came in. Uh, we want to get those to all of our friends. Send us a dm on instagram or send us a message uh we we'll send some stickers out to you guys send you some don't sticker, be shy some sticker love um and let us know what you're doing all around the world we want to know you know what other business owners are doing what other uh pit masters are doing how you're cooking your meats uh send us some sexy photos with those hashtag behind those, the smoke we, we want to see uh, those stickers where where in the world how how uh, how creative can we get uh with these stickers and we appreciate everybody listening and uh, be sure to check us out and tell, uh, tell your friends, tell your friends to tune in.